Hi, this is David at Anarchapoco 2020 with the Patriots Lament Radio Show. And right now we have Grant from OceanBuilders.com and he's going to take us through what they're doing with seasteading and, and these pods and, and tell us about himself and his company. All right. So, yeah, my name is Grant Romant. Uh, we have a company that is building floating homes. Uh, about a year ago, I found out about the about seasteading. Uh, I had been living on a floating home for the last three and a half years, actually, uh, but just a kind of a very conventional looking home and completely different from what we're doing now. This is a whole new technology that we believe will make living on the sea something that's actually practical, affordable, and uh, viable and eco-restorative as well. So it's got a lot of really interesting features to it. How did you get involved? How did you go from your kind of traditional floating home to this project? And, and what is your take on the viability? Like this is, a, this is about recycling stuff that's already out there. Um, what's your, your take on that? Uh, well, I've been living on one for like three and a half years. Like just a nor it looked like a normal home. If you saw a Sleepless in Seattle, the same kind of home that's in there. And uh, I've been kind of making note of all the changes I'd like to make and how I would improve it and make it better. And uh, then the opportunity came last year to see the first seastead in the water in Thailand that was built. And that was a totally different design, completely different. And kind of based on the idea of uh, of an oil rig where you have a large pole that goes into the water. It's kind of like uh, if you have a, an, uh, a wine bottle with no wine in it, put the cork in, throw it in the water, it would just float and just stay there forever. Uh, we'd move around, so what we do is we put a really heavy weight at the bottom, it makes it really stable, and then you can put a living platform on top. So, uh, so when, we, when I saw the original in Thailand, it was kind of this diamond in the rough. It was just like, it wasn't designed by like someone with an aesthetic, you know, a, a, a good sense of style. It was just uh, very, it was an engineer that made it because he wanted to actually use it as a, as a starting platform for building a platform to go into space. So he, that was his interest, but it wasn't pretty at all. And I saw it, it was like a diamond in a rough, and it's like, this has potential to do something really amazing. This is, this, this can be uh, a gateway to doing something more into, like if we do this right, we can open up the oceans to be uh, a new form of real estate that hasn't been done before. And what was really interesting around the original prototype, uh, it was only in the water for two months, and already there was a huge ecosystem of fish that were just thriving in this area. And basically any time you put, uh, create shade in the water, that creates a habitat. And the fish love it and they go towards it. And so we got the idea that we can, maybe we can engineer it to be even more sustainable, more supportive of life, to be more of a, of a habitat. So we have one of the largest 3D printers in the world. It's uh, 20 feet by 16 feet by eight feet tall. Um, and so we thought, well, how can we use this creatively? Maybe we can, maybe we can 3D print a coral reef around the base of your house. Uh, and then recently we became aware of some uh, researchers that have actually uh, scanned the coral polyps and, and the home, like the actual coral polyps are the actual life that makes the reefs. And so they've actually scanned uh, the reefs and seen the exact structure, the exact shape that they like to inhabit and live in. So we thought, well, if we could mimic that and create these ideal structures, like it's kind of a skeleton system that really, uh, that they love, then this could be amazing. Um, and then combine that with other things. Fish, we noticed that there's, there's thousands and thousands of fish there. And there were, um, there was a ladder going, you know, we were maybe 15 meters under the water and scuba diving, and there's a ladder with a hole at the bottom. And there's a little fish with its head popping out. And it's like, wow, it's like a little fish hotel. Um, so we came up with the idea, well, maybe we could build those structures into the, this 3D printed structure. So fish love to have their, their backs covered. They like to kind of be in this little place where they can feel safe. So why don't, why don't we engineer that? So there's a whole lot of really exciting things we're, we're doing with that, or that we're, we're trying to create like a, uh, an incubator house where people can come down and help us hack the ocean and find solutions. We have a marine, oh, sorry. Yeah, so, well, it sounds like, 
I have a, a friend of mine years back who lives on a houseboat in Seattle, you know, which is wouldn't be capable of being at sea. Yeah. Uh, but one of his dreams was to get some shoreline and do aquaculture. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea of doing aquaculture out in the ocean wasn't really anticipated. And then you guys found this all these happy accidents that happen from putting a structure out there. Yeah. And then you can actually engineer into that and create, a, like a, you said, a sustainable habitat and an ecosystem around each, each pod. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if we can make each house so that it's eco-restorative, that's amazing. And I think there's so many technologies we need to figure out to innovate, to create, to live, be able to live on the sea completely and have a community on the sea. Um, even if it's whether it's like 100 meters out or, or a kilometer out or 10 kilometers out, we need new innovations to be able to make each home self-sustainable. So uh, I think this is like the new frontier. This is the new, if we do this right, like we're, our goal is not to build a whole city. Like people have been dreaming about doing this for decades and no one's done it because everyone has plans for making a $200 million mega city or a billion dollar mega city. And it's just so big that it's hard to get momentum going. So we just want to focus on building one beautiful, amazing home. And if we do it right, then someone else is going to say, well, I want one of those. And then that turns into, so one turns into two, turns into 10, turns into 100. And then that's the beginning of possibly uh, the new frontier. And I think it's the first step to going out further, like going into space. There's no point in going out in space right now because there's so much, you have to spend so much money there. Like we have this perfect testing ground for making independent self-sustaining self homes right here in our environment. So it's like the perfect testing ground to go into the next stage. Right, right, stepping stone. Yeah, um, what is your background like in business? You know, there, I'll just provide a, a little bit to frame that question. We're at Anarcapulco, so you have you have people with an economics background. You have um, you have people with a crypto background. You have people who are just into you know new forms of freedom and getting outside of structures that they don't want to be a part of. Um, what what's your background coming into this? Uh, well, my I've been an entrepreneur since I was like six years old, so um, I'm 48 right now. So I've been at it for a while, and my company that I, I still run, um, it's pretty much all outsourced, so it gives me a lot of freedom to be able to do whatever I want. I used to work 17 hours a day, six, seven days a week, and now it's down to about an hour a day, uh, five days a week. So it gave me, I was basically at a point where I was semi-retired because I didn't have to do any, to work hard to, to sustain myself. And then I didn't think I'd ever really do a startup again or work really hard. I thought I was just going to coast and have a good time. And then I saw this and it's like, I have to do this. This is like, this is everything I think I've been an entrepreneur for, for my whole life. What to get ready for this. What aspects of your background did it, did it appeal to you? Know, do you have a background in real estate or is it, the, is it the getting out on the ocean aspect or the ecology aspect? What's the, what's the driver for you? Uh, I've always loved being on the water. Um, every weekend uh, in the summer, I used to go to my aunt's house and just hang out in the pool all day long. My parents never saw me in the summer. It was on the weekends I was always gone. Uh, so I always loved being in the water. I lived on a floating home for the last three and a half years. So I, I love the idea of waking up and walking downstairs and jumping in the paddle boat or in the kayak and going for a morning paddle. And I just fell in love with that lifestyle. It's just it's so beautiful to be able to do that and get some exercise and it's just very peaceful. And uh, I thought it would be amazing if everyone, like everyone had this kind of experience. Um, and then this came up and it's like, well, maybe I can help other people to have it. Um, there's a lot of environmental things I'm putting into this because I want it to be eco-restorative, not, eco not just environmentally neutral, but restorative. Um, people ask me if I'm an environmentalist and I say no, I don't consider myself an environmentalist. It just seems really stupid to be um, throwing garbage in your backyard and expect for it not to cause a problem. Like, just seems practical. Um, so I, when I was eight, I wrote my first software development program, a really simple one. I was, I think, the first in Canada in the science fair for you know with a computer doing things. Um, so I guess I was ahead of the curve. Um, 
So we're developing a whole lot of really cool home automation software. Uh, I have a software development company right now that's their business uh, outsourced. So we're building a lot of really cool tech to go on the helms. Um, so I have, I guess, so many different angles. And I was working on a um, project called Freedom Ship about 20 years ago. Okay. It was going to be this, uh, some people may have heard about it, mm -hmm. it's a one mile long ship that was going to circumnavigate the world. And I just, I saw it and I fell in love with it. I thought, this is amazing. Um, and the problem with that was it was such a big project. They needed seven or eight billion dollars to get the project started. And it's like, well, um, I tried to support it as much as I could to get it help build momentum, but ultimately it didn't go anywhere because they, it's hard to come up with seven or eight billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And when I saw this, it was like, the, it just clicked. It's like, this is something that can, that can happen. And just, it's something we can do that pretty much anyone can do because it's just, it's, it's not gonna cost a lot of money to build one home and do it right. And then from there we can build and we can go bigger and we can expand from there and then that could turn into something big. Sure, yeah, it's a starting point though. Yeah, yeah and then you see where it goes. What is, what is a community, what do you envision a community of these types of homes um, looking like? You know, where do you think most people would put them, you're talking, you know, 100 meters, a kilometer, 10 kilometers offshore. Where would people put these? Um, would people opt for these instead of a traditional houseboat in areas like Seattle or Vancouver or someplace like that. Um, where do you see that going and, and how, how does a neighborhood of, of these houses look? Okay, um, right now we're starting in Panama. We have a really beautiful area. It's uh, about a two hour drive from Panama City and it's in an area that's it's right on the water. It's, of course, it's a sea pod right on the water. It has an island about 100 meters, 150, 200 meters away. Uh, Incredible green lands, you know, rolling hills, and it's just it's just breathtaking. So it's it's a beautiful area. We have room there for about 30 to 40 sea pots. Uh, so it'll be a, a, a nice, perfect size community, uh, not too big, and but small enough to know everyone that's there. Um, and it's close to a marina, so it's it's only about a kilometer away from a marina. So we have close access to to uh, water taxis and uh, restaurants and other things. So there's uh, you can still be connected to the land and do things. Um, and it's kind of a starting point. So it's the beginning. Uh, going 12 miles out was a good experiment to show what's possible. But I think right now we need to start somewhere close to land as a stepping stone because you're not used to uh, living in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. it's, and actually living closer to the water I, or to, to land, I prefer that because it, land actually, actually is a very beautiful backdrop. Uh, if it's just ocean all around, it's beautiful, but it's, it's nicer if there's some nice rolling green hills in the background. Right, right. Yeah, there's a practicality and aesthetic side to that. That's very cool. That's very cool. So what is, what are the next steps? Like what's the three to five year for this project look like? How do people get involved if they're curious for information and how would they get involved if they want to invest time or money or technology? Okay. Uh, well, we've started an incubator in Panama uh, because there's so many innovations that are necessary to make this happen. So we started, we just rented a very large house. Actually, it's two houses uh, with 450 feet of waterfronts and with a view of where the sea pods are going in the water. So it's an ideal place, and we're inviting people to come down and participate. Uh, this is like, there's so much innovation that, that, that is needed. Everyone from, with every kind of background is needed, um, from engineers to uh, software developers to marine biologists to um, 3D printing specialists to welders and fiberglass experts and like, there's everything that you can imagine a city needing is needed. Um, and innovators and people that have new ideas, we want to have a lot of really cool blockchain technology that we're building into the homes. So if you have a really cool blockchain technology, uh, we'd love to hear about what you're doing and if it can be built into what we're doing. Uh, we're really open to innovation. Like we're, we're starting basically an uh, innovation hub to, to support that. So. Uh, people can go to the website, oceanbuilders.com, sign up for more information. We'll be uh, 
sending more calls out to come join us in Panama. We're probably going to fill up at our incubator pretty soon, so we'll start another one and we'll keep cool. working. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, I think we'll eventually take over the whole area right. with uh, innovation because this, I think this is the new frontier. This is like, it's really exciting what's going on and what's starting. And there's a lot of people that came up to the booth here and they had that like sparkle in the eye. And I recognize that because I had that last year when I saw it. Okay. So it's like, it's like people are putting the dots together. So it's really exciting. Cool. So oceanbuilders.com. Yeah. And, uh, and come down to Panama. Do you spend much time down there? Or? Uh, I'm there most of the time. Uh, I moved out of my floating house uh, in Toronto in, uh, on December 31st, so just a couple months ago. Uh, so I'm all, all in on, on the project. Uh, I have a lot of traveling that I need to do for you know, business to meetings and uh, trainings and learning how to use 3D printers and all kinds right. of fun stuff. Right. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks so much right. for talking to us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay.